In this video, we're going to talk about dividing decimals by whole numbers. We have a couple of steps to talk about. The first step is we're going to place the decimal directly above where it is in the dividend. Now that might not make a whole lot of sense right now, but when we do the example, then you'll see what we're talking about. The second step is to divide like normal. So we're going to do this first example together, and this problem is 2 and 1 tenth divided by 7. So as we're doing this, the first step said to put our decimal directly above where it is in the dividend. So up here in my quotient, I'm just moving it directly up above. This is where we were talking to you about in class about how important it is to make sure that you line up your quotient by place value because of this decimal, if you don't put it in the right spot when you're dividing, then you will get an incorrect quotient. So we're going to go through our normal steps of division. We're going to try to see if 7 can go into 2, and we know that 2 cannot be divided by 7, so we're going to move on. We're going to go ahead and put a 0 here, though, because we have our decimal. We're going to move on and grab both of these digits and say, see how many times 7 will go into 21. We know that 7 times 3 is 21, so we're going to go through that process of we just divided. Now we're multiplying 7 times 3. Then we're going to do our subtraction like normal with our traditional, and we get 0, and there's nothing to bring down. So our quotient is 3 tenths. So we know if we check with multiplication, we can come down here and do a multiplication problem. I know that 3 times 7 is 21, so I put down my 1, regroup my 2. 7 times 0 is 0, plus that 2 would be 2. I look up in my problem and I see there is only one digit behind the decimal, so I'm going to put one digit behind the decimal in my product, and you will notice that both of them match, so I have checked my work and I know I am correct. Our next problem, we're going to be dividing 8 and 4 tenths by 4. And just like we did last time, we're going to raise that decimal straight up. And then we're going to divide like normal. So 4 goes into 8, I know, two times. So I'm going to put a 2 right above the 8 in the 1's place. Then I multiply 2 times 4, which is 8. I subtract, get 0. Then I bring down the 4. And we know that 4 goes into 4 one time. So the 1 is going to go directly above the 4 in the tenths place. Then I multiply, 1 times 4 is 4, subtract, we don't have a remainder. There's no other digits to bring down, so we're done. Then you can check with multiplication, 2 and 1 tenth times 4, and remember we're thinking 21 times 4. So my 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, now I'm going to go back and get that decimal. I've got one digit behind the decimal in my factor, so I have one digit behind the decimal in my product. Eight and four tenths, we match up, so we're good. We're going to show you one last example. In this example, we're going to have to continue the process of dividing even though our dividend stops in the tenths place. When you are dividing with decimals, you cannot put a remainder of a fraction or put the R in a number. Decimals are essentially your remainder, so we're going to show you how the process could continue. Just like in the other ones, we're going to move our decimal up from the dividend up into the quotient directly above where it was, and then we're going to divide like normal. 5 goes into 7 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. Now I'm going to subtract, and I have 2 remaining from there. I'm going to bring down the 4. I know that 5 goes into 24 four times. So I put it in right over the tenths place. 4 times 5 is 20. I'm going to subtract, and I have 4 left. Usually we would stop and put a remainder here, but we can't do that. You can't mix decimals and fractions together. You can't mix a decimal and put an R in a number. So this is what you do now. You will now put a 0 because we have repeating zeros. When we talk about numbers, they technically could go on and have an equivalent on and on. So we put the zero there so that we can bring it down and continue the division process even more so that we can finish up our problem because we don't want to try to put a remainder in there because the decimals are the remainder. So now I can say 5 can go into 40 8 times, and I know that 8 times 5 is 40. 
and I can stop when I have a zero. When you're dividing with decimals, you don't stop until your remainder is zero because you can't report it any other way except for in decimal form.